So this is it. This is the um, pinnacle of my efforts of do-it-yourself synthesizer. This is my homemade cardboard synth. And it's not just taped on knobs. This really, really and truly makes sounds. I got a sine wave. I have yet to put all the functionality in for the envelope or the amplifier and I'm building another oscillator so I'll have two oscillators instead of just the one oscillator. Of course the oscillator tune. Works. I haven't got the mod wheel on yet or the pitch wheel on yet. However the MIDI out is on. Uh, and then I'm building a nice uh, mixing section, an amplifier section that will mix the oscillators one and two, envelope dent, and this is where I'm actually going to put a noise circuit in, uh, noise, pink noise, white noise. And then the last bit on this synthesizer is the 16-step sequencer, and these of course are just voltages out, and it kind of works like this. You can look, it's kind of hard to see out in the daylight, but the LEDs light up as they step through. Get a going here. And right now, I just have the sequencer hooked up to the filter section instead of the oscillator. Now, you may be wondering how it was I was able to build all this fancy stuff. Well, it isn't that fancy, really. This is a um, M-Audio MIDI board. I'm going to actually take a look at... It's just a regular keyboard, and all of its guts are still here. So this is just the control bits under the M-Audio, which are just the octaves up and octaves down special control function, the volume slider. This device doesn't actually use any of the digital um, MIDI controls except for the keys out. But if I did uh, have another keyboard plugged in, all this functionality would be used. So I still have yet to put the mod wheel and the pitch wheel for the M-Audio keyboard on here, in addition to the pitch wheel, master pitch wheel that would control oscillators one and two on this synthesizer. The synthesizer bits itself will look familiar to some of you after I reveal it is actually, if you look back here, just a CSO1. Okay, these are the slider knobs for each of the functions on this keyboard. Now, the CSO1 claims that it has a VCO, but it doesn't. It's actually a digitally controlled chip, and the oscillator on this is digitally controlled, um, which is why it was so easy to put a MIDI kit on it from Highly Liquid. Anyway, the rest of these typically are just variable pots, potentiometers, sliders, and I actually bypassed all of them, you know, either desoldered them or scratched the trace out on the circuit board, and then came over here and got the same pot except in a rotary fashion to make it uh, more like a, a knob type um, pot, so it'd be like a Moog or a synthesizers.com or what have you, sort of a tactile interface. Over here are two boards that make up the 16-step sequencer. Not actually very complicated. Um, this is loosely based around the 10-step sequencer you'll find on the web. It uses a pair of 4017 chips, uh, which are 10 uh, decade counter chips, 
I've kind of hot rodded them so it's a pair of eight step sequencers and they loop back to each other using a inverter chip. So I'm using two inverters to actually use the count enable to disable the count enable when one hits to step nine. Anyway, not much of a trick, but it makes for a good 16 step sequencer. And then lastly, I'm using two more of the inverters on this hex inverter chip for the clock that drives the sequencer. And here are the other bits for the sequencer, the diodes to keep the voltages from backing up on the resistors, to send out the values. Uh, what else, what else, what else, what else? I've added some spacers in the keyboard to allow the wires to go in and out, since this will eventually all go into an enclosure. And then, lastly, this won't stay in cardboard. Uh, it looks kind of ridiculous in cardboard, but it will go into a wood case that I will eventually build. But as I was prototyping, I realized that I had to have some way to make modifications, and I did make lots of modifications to this as I was building it, which is why I was glad I did it in cardboard first. The very first beta phase, of course, was cardboard. The second phase will be into a wood, because I don't want to commit a lot of energy or effort into this. But here's a panel, a little updated, and doesn't have this big crease that the cardboard has in it. Uh, long term, of course, it will most likely go to some sort of plastic or metal face. <laughs>